Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where once again we try to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market. And today, I thought I'd talk about extremes. What's the most listings we've ever had? What's the lowest we've ever had? How many days on market? All those numbers are out there. And on our last video, we looked at some of the numbers that you should look at to expect a change. You know, a lot of people are hoping for uh, price reductions or a crash. And I'm not hoping for a crash because that means, uh, you know, stores start closing, people get unemployed. I am hoping for a normal market. I'm, uh, I'm kind of ambivalent about this interest rate increase. Um, it's going to cost some people some money. But the shift may begin to push us towards a more balanced market. I don't know. And uh, so good morning, Maddie and uh, Uberella too. Um, so I'm going to look at some extremes. And by extremes, I'm going to push us over to this chart here. And I'm going to try and help us see this a little bit. The most, the lowest number of listings we've ever had is 8,162. Okay. And that was in March 2nd, it says of 2022, which is, you know, just recently so but where are we today now what they do is they count everything active under contract and contingency and here we are 8215 so officially today we are at the lowest number of listings ever available in our market now let's look at this this is one that you see me track here often and this is um let's see i'm trying to highlight this for you sales per month seven day moving average the highest we've ever had was in 2019, 10,540. The lowest we've ever had is 2,732, average 7,165. And so where are we today? Well, it's interesting. I track the seven-day moving average, and I get, I got to get my mouth straightened out here, so... Um, Here's what I come up with. See this red line here? This is a seven-day moving average. These are the number of homes that are under contract. And right now, it's 37.98. The blue line is the number of homes that have come on in the past seven days. Now, why is that significant? Well, you just saw an extreme that says that the lowest number of sales that we've ever had was in 2008 of 2,732 homes. And we're running about 3,900 now. So we can go down in sales. But there's an interesting correlation here between January of 2008 and then look at how many days inventory we had in April of 2008 right here. It shows 429 days of active inventory. Months of supply, 20.6 so where are we at on months of supply today? So the highest we've ever been is 20.6. The lowest we've ever been is 0 0.9 um, in 05, 2005. But if we look at today, we're sitting here with months of days of supply of 15.5. And when you look at the extreme of days of supply, let's see, where is it? Days of supply, months of supply, days inventory, 429. And the lowest we've ever had is 27. We're sitting here at 15. Prices are not going to go down if we only have 15 days supply. Now, what's going to be interesting to watch and take a look at uh, uh, the inventory numbers and wait for them to grow, but will they grow? Because right now we're not seeing it. And the um, months of supply, you know, back when we hit this peak was 20 months. You know, that's, that's a year and a half, a little over a year and a half where the home's on the market. And then the lowest and the average we have is 4.4 months. So that's a balanced market. Um, look how many days it takes uh, to sell a home. Um, it says here, let's see, days on the market, monthly sales, 136 compared to today, 24. And even that 24 is kind of questionable. So we're seeing that we have a long way to go just to get to average. So when I look at the extreme numbers, all the extreme numbers seem to be today. And so I'm looking at rates going up, and I can show you where we're at here today because it's we're climbing like a rocket ship, 4.72 on a national average. Uh, pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive. 
we get over five, um, then sales are going to slow down. But sales are only at 3,900 on a seven-day moving average now. Are they going to go down to 2,700, which was a record low? So, and if that happens, will that mean that inventory increases? Because going from 3,900 homes to 27 homes, 2,700 contracts is pretty significant. Um, it's off by about 1,200 units on a seven-day moving average. That can make prices either stabilize or bring them down. But the first thing we're going to see that I went over in the last video is the asking price will start decreasing first before actual sales price come down. So we're not too far off from the bottom when it comes to the number of uh, contracts that we write right on a weekly basis. So when people say sales are going like crazy now, there's all these buyers out there, you can see that there really isn't. There's only 3,900. There would considerably be, I mean, there would be considerably more buyers if we had more available inventory, but we don't. And if you look at uh, today and you look at how many homes we have that are just simply active, we're at 4,382. That hasn't budged despite all of this news and uh, the actions that's going on in the economy and the fact that interest rates have gone up to 4.7. Now, there may be people out there now that are uh, um, in a contract and they're locked at a lower rate. But for you and I, the average Joe that's out there looking for a home right now, it's getting kind of rough to, uh, to get a decent rate. But 4.7 isn't a bad rate, so I don't want to get too, uh, too carried away. Um, Mortgage rates are surging faster than expected, prompting economists to lower their sales forecast. So what do these economists say? Because a couple videos back, I showed you each one has a different opinion on where we're going this year. And this one quotes the National Association of Realtors. And it says, uh, as a result of the recent spike in rates, economists are lowering their home forecast sales for this year so they already came out one forecast now the rates went up faster than they thought they're jumping in and going well we need to rethink that so at this time in 2021 rates were about 3.45 now they're hitting 4.5 you just saw 4.7 so they're saying that rates have a small chance to top out before hitting five percent and a good chance of topping out before hitting six percent it used to be that if rates were going up at 6%, we figured that the market would start turning around. Now it looks like that number is going to be 5 So uh, the problem is we find ourselves needing to be concerned with inflation for the first time since the 1980s. So here is the National Association guy, Lawrence Young, chief economist. He expects the rate to hover around 4.5% this year. Well, we're there now, pal, so let's see if it, if it stays right there. And it said... He had previously predicted it'd stay at 4%. Actually, they said it was going to be 3.7. So, and for sales to drop 3% in 2022, but now he expects it to fall 6 to 8%. But they haven't officially updated their forecast. So they're expecting sales to fall, but they're not expecting prices to fall. That may happen in 2023. I don't know. I don't predict out that far but you can see by the extremes that right now we have a long way to go now we're still growing like crazy out here there's a korean electronics plant lg plans 2.8 billion dollar plant in queen creek and it's going to be town documents say it'll create 2800 jobs and include 1 million square feet of new development and uh, the queen creek town council voted at march 16th meeting uh, well, I won't go into all the details, but that's a lot of jobs out there at Queen Creek. Now, it's interesting. I met a guy yesterday, and he's down here from Reno, and he is um, um, he's in the cement business, and he's pouring a big cement pad for the um, new data center for Facebook, which is out in the East Valley, and he's, he's down here for five years. Oddly enough, he said they're putting him up in a hotel because he's only down here three to four days a week. And uh, that's a long time to be hanging out in a hotel. But but he was telling me about the problem with cement. You know, there's just a hard time getting cement. And, uh, and especially, I think there was something he was saying in Seattle that all these projects have just stopped because um, evidently there's a strike going on up there. Um, so now I want to move over. And this, this one is interesting, is um, Two Valley Cities rank among the nation's highest rent price increase. Do you want to guess which one those are? I won't leave you hanging too long. 
Of the 100 largest cities in the nation, Chandler had the second highest rental increase with 50.8% bump in monthly rental rates for one bedroom unit. I had no idea that rent had gone up that much in Chandler. 50%. Mesa took the 10th spot with 30.6 increase. Nationwide, one bedroom units were up 24% at 1,684, while two bedroom units were up 21.8%. And it says, surprisingly, Scottsdale made the list of cities with the biggest decrease in two bedroom rent prices year over year. That's unusual. Um, but here's Phoenix. Uh, one bedroom average is 1354. And then you get down to Chandler, or here's Mesa, 1382. Chandler, 1570. These are for one bedrooms, folks. Uh, year over year change, 50.84%. There just isn't any good news whether you're buying or renting right now. So we're all holding our breath. But I hope you get a concept of what the numbers look like in this market and what the extremes are and what we need to follow. And the first, one of the numbers that I like to follow and uh, check out on, on Cromford is um, price changes. And price changes, let's see if I can pull up that chart here real quick. And price changes, um, nobody ever changes the price to go up. Sometimes agents do, and I, I find it just silly. Ooh, it's not selling? Let's raise the price. That ought to do it. Um, but you can see that that chart's coming up. Number of listings, 435. We have a long way to go, you know, to get up anywhere near where it was historically. But if that's trending up, that tells you that people that price too high are pulling back their expectations. That's the first number that's going to spike before you ever get close to seeing a price reduction. There's no way around it. There's no way to get a price reduction when an inventory is as low as it is. And, uh, and sales are hanging right there at about 3,900. Will they drop to 2,700? They could. They could go down with these interest rate hikes. So we're going to watch that number closely because that was quite the extreme. So I hope that helps when you're watching this Arizona real estate market. Do me a favor, smash that like button. And then I will check with you later on in the week.